Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. Get out of that mindset. Like, for me, when someone says it to me, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. The key is in the name, be social on social media. You've got to be social. You can't just post and ghost. The goal isn't to go viral. What is the ultimate goal of posting that post or that reel every single day? I can't stress that enough. You've got to post stories every single day. Hey, be sure you stick around because we're only getting warmed up. What is your favorite chicken wing flavor? Uh, mm. so, yeah, this I'll is lose, the content it, people I'll really lose. want, guys. A uh, quick update from me before we start today's episode with Rebecca Carpenter. We have just announced our event, our workshop, our speaking event that is coming up on the 9th of April. Uh, Rebecca is going to be one of the four speakers and she's going to be talking and sharing all of her top tips uh, around Instagram. So if you enjoy this episode, then she's going to be going so much further into this topic at this workshop. Um, showing behind the scenes of, of how she creates her reels and and manages her Instagram account. We've got three other speakers. We've got Lauren Goodman, a, a wedding planner. We've got photographer Johnny Draper, Sam Fitton, the magician, previous guests on our podcast, um, all speaking on a variety of business-related topics that are going to help you grow your wedding business, get more bookings, etc. So tickets are on sale now, and the info is linked in the description for this podcast episode and if you're watching on youtube it'll be in the video description follow the link or drop us a dm if you want more info on instagram and book your tickets now because it's going to be an incredible event we're really excited about it anyway anyway <laughs> go on Howard. go on ladies and gentlemen welcome to another uh think wedding business podcast today's really exciting for me um the, the lady we've got on is such a whirlwind. If you ever, if you ever feel like you're working hard enough, then you, there's already somebody out there who's working ten times harder and doing a million more things than you are. And and that is definitely this lady who is coming on to us today. Can I call you a lady? Is that all right? Oh wow! Um, I've never been called a lady in a long time. That's so amazing. Nice. Rebecca Hello. Carpenter, <laughs> amazing Hello. photographic talent that you are. Welcome. Thank you so much. Keeping it in the family. I love, I love that. This is yeah. a family affair. Yeah, this. this is, you've got a wing sandwich going on today. Um, so <laughs> for anybody out there who doesn't know, Rebecca is uh, an incredible photographer, destination or anywhere photographer, I imagine. Um, absolutely smashing it. But she's also brilliant on the educational side of things as well. She has a lot of products she sells to the industry uh regards social media contracts lots of different digital products going on so as i just mentioned to rebecca before we put a post out on our instagram and asking people what they really wanted to learn and the majority was saying we want to know more about social media and instagram i think specific um so that is why overwhelmingly <laughs> please teach us instagram like teach us I mean, instagram. That's what everyone wants right Although she, <laughs> although she can teach us uh, probably about every every aspect of a wedding business i think she she, I think we're going to focus on the social media today because she absolutely riding high with that one. She's killing it. So, Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for having me. I, so, I, this is selfish of me, but um, we worked together ooh, five years ago or so. That was Shreel such Town. a good time. And I, I was, I just like instantly, like you know, like fell in love with you. Thought we would like get on really well. We had such and an afternoon. I was like. I'll, I'll be def I'll definitely be working with her again soon. Oh, we and haven't since. I, and I still haven't. So I'm so happy to see you again. Same. Oh. I remember that wedding so well because there was a hot chocolate bar and nobody was using it. And you're like, why yeah. is our and you Adam went up and started like making a hot chocolate? I was like, well, if Adam's going, I'm gonna go as well. And yeah, I was that guy, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like when it comes we, to I our house. Three each, maybe. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like you when you come to our house, the first thing he does when he comes here, Rebecca, is straight in the fridge. Helping himself to food. <laughs> Just, yeah. I've written here in capital letters. Oh. Can you give us a brief background um just before Please. we get onto the, the meaty stuff? Because I only say that because I know I listened to your podcast with uh with Igor and Sam Docker. Um shout out Igor, uh, who, <laughs> I, who I miss. Um and you've had, I don't know, 20 jobs or something. Oh, yes, a very colourful CV. If, if we can, like, just touch on how you got into photographing weddings and, you know, got to today, briefly. Briefly. So the short story is I was a fashion blogger with a camera, so knew my way around the camera, 
knew aesthetically what sort of pictures hit, um, had various jobs in between, presenting princess parties, various things. Um, and But photography was always the link with all of those. So I was always handy with a camera and just knew about marketing and then cut a very long story shoot, shoot, short. Um, I ended up in weddings and I fell in love with shooting weddings and was a guest at a friend's wedding, controversially took my camera and photographed the evening segment once the photographer had gone, but photographed bits in the day, just so I had content to build a portfolio. Listen, if he was, if he or she was upset about that, then, then he, you know. I mean, well, he was chilling in his food, missing golden hour, and I was like, what, what's going on? So anyway, um, so yeah, that was seven years ago I think which is which is wild um and photographed my first wedding it made the front cover of a magazine and as it you did... do <laughs> I know it's ridiculous when I look back at it now I'm like wow the edit on that is really yellow like what is that but at the time it yeah it, it got picked up and it celebrated very quickly and I went full-time under a year of starting um amazing but I, I love it. And it, and after all the jobs I had, it definitely felt like it was always meant to lead to this. So you're full time, you're full time in your wedding business? Or yes. Do you do, yeah, because I know obviously there's loads of branches to it, but it's all wedding related. All wedding related yeah. slash business. <laughs> Amazing. I was going to ask, I've got a, um, if there was a like a specific point where you went, this is taken off or like a turning point. But I suppose, as you said, very nonchalantly, my first wedding was in a magazine and it all just blew up from there. <laughs> like... <laughs> the, the, the turning point was I booked a stand at the National Wedding Fair because I was like, well, for me personally, I would try any form of marketing once because I think you should. I think it's really important to try different ways of marketing because you can't put all your eggs in one basket. And I've always learned that marketing. So uh, through all the money I had at that, and I was also working another job, to fund this stand and my goal was if I book 10 weddings I can leave my job and go full-time and that was the goal and so I booked the stand and for lots of people it's probably a very awkward situation because you have to kind of talk to people pitch to people but for me I was like this is my jam I've done trade shows I'm gonna absolutely nail this and I went the next level up I took a card machine so I was like I'm gonna take deposits at the show so took a card machine, took deposits, and I booked out, what, 15, 20 weddings at that show. I went full time. Uh, so, yeah, that was the turning point. And I never forget being at that show and like spending like 15 pounds on a little plastic Prosecco and celebrating with my husband because we knew that was it. I could go full time. That was oh, amazing. amazing. And that's the standout. It's, it's great. You do remember those key. Yeah. Ones. And I have, I have a, a little boomerang <clears> with me. <throat> And my champagne glass, like I document anything like that. <laughs> um, that was the defining would, moment. Have you, have you, would you do any of those sort of things again now? Or is that no. I mean, your life done. <laughs> done. I said there's there's nothing wrong with wedding fairs. I think that that I think they're great. Um, but I think I, I think how it works with clients now, it's very very different for me personally. Like my client onboarding process is a bit different now. Um, but they are great. They're a really great way to meet people because I think you should meet people and that because like, the connection you meet with the couples, I think, is is incredibly important. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't do it now. Um, but I would never say never, if that makes sense, because I was like, oh, but then I probably do that. I but doing that a national, then doing a national wedding fair is like another level. Like it was like a massive stand. Yeah a lot of money um but it did work so i'm not knocking the national wedding fair i think shout out guys you like it did it did the job but um for a girl who was working you know part-time as a receptionist like scraping that money together and then you had to pay for electrics and lighting and mm -hmm. all the things on top of the sand it was kind of like oh I, I didn't really i was very naive i didn't really know um but it worked it was it was the best money i could possibly invest in my business this reminds me of um, we had a we had Dax on Sax on the podcast a while ago, and he had a very similar defining point in his career, certainly in weddings. And he put a load of eggs into this one basket, a big wedding show at Tatton Park, 
cost thousands, yeah. went into debt, they bought the amazing <laughs> equipment and it was make or break for them. Yeah. And it certainly made them, I think they got about 2,000 inquiries or something. It gave wow. them like three years. But I think it's really important that because it's like you're saying you wouldn't do it now. And I, I wouldn't do it now. But when you're starting out in the wedding industry, I, I mean, I used to go to wedding fairs all the time and stand and talk to people. And it's just that building process at the beginning. Yeah. Getting out. And he, sometimes it's not about getting sort of bookings from people looking. It's to create those relationships with the venues that you're in and, and the relationship with different suppliers as well, because then your name's getting around. And it's a great thing to do at the start, certainly that first year or two of your business. 100%. Just like you said, try everything once. Yeah. I, I even tried an advert in a local paper when I first started. It was with the most, the worst amount of money. <laughs> And, you know, it was ridiculous but well I tried it you know and you try it and and that's the thing with these things that comes experience and I, I truly believe any opportunity when you are in front of physical people always always leads to something it's never going to be a waste yeah it's and that's why it's good being in the wedding industry yeah. when you're working you're in front of low you're, you're selling yourself at the same time as working yeah. aren't you? always and that's when you get that momentum people see you they recommend you it's uh well you should be you say that you, sh you should be some people probably forget that they're being watched and that there's eyes on them at a wedding and they're going you know i mean i'm i'm, I'm guilty of like resting bitch face at the best of times and i've had to really train myself to be like you're always people are always i've got eyeballs on you so yeah, always yeah. look happy or even if well, you forget and your face slips yeah, you're concentrating I, just you... remember to you're, you you are on the minute you arrive at a wedding venue. And this is what I find really, this is probably very common when you hear this as a photographer, videographer. The amount of times I would leave a wedding and guests are like, you've been amazing. Like, I think like, mm. I haven't even seen the photos yet. And they're like, you are incredible. You've done such a good job today. And I'm like, that's really nice. These could be the worst photos ever. But yeah, but it doesn't, you've already won, haven't you? You've already yeah, won at that point. And that's, and oh, that's so it's important. Cool. And uh, it's so, they... so funny it's so funny Adam because me and Adam have done loads of weddings together and at the end of it we're saying goodbye to our couples mm. they're coming over and they, they're saying to me because I've done my thing that oh how it's, you've been brilliant yeah. Adam you've been amazing you're amazing and I'm like wait a minute you've not even seen his film yet yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> so it just goes to show your personality on the day and just mm. being that person really really helps but you're on show to the venue owners as well aren't you it's not just yeah. it's everybody that's there um, I, I think it's great that to hear to, you say this uh, in the place where you're at now with your with your brand and your business. Like, I, you know, if anyone goes on your website after listening to this, you can you've got that real luxury, like adventure destination kind of feel to it. You really market to that, um, and 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 yet because because I, I hear a lot when you get to if you want to get in the higher level, it's all through planners. You don't need to speak to couples. You don't need to put your face out there. It puts luxury in inverted commas coupled off um so it's great to hear that you still encourage that personal connection you still think it's important because we really believe in that um, oh it's is, it's the is that most something important. that you do you know that does that help even with those that, kind of clients still 100 percent, and it is probably what my biggest value is as 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 a photographer you're you're building a brand, not a business. And I think people need to remember that your brand is the most important thing because if people recognize you and your brand, they will fall in love with your business and what you do. And I think, especially with like the luxury term, like you said, everyone talks about luxury, luxury, luxury. I know. Means I, yeah, I, I, know. I feel words, like, but... I know. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like the wedding industry has had a massive shift the last year or so. We could discuss this later on. And I think it gets thrown around quite a lot. And I think people think, oh, like you said, weddings come through planners. And the amount of weddings I've had that they booked me because we connected on a little shoot together and then they've booked me in and they wasn't what they thought they were going to book. And it's because of the connection and then being being able to feel, feel comfortable around me. Um, so I say to people, your personality and your connection is ultimately what's going to sell you and then they're going to fall in love with your work so don't water down who you are and I think for so long I definitely did that 100% definitely guilty of that in the beginning because when you do start out you look on Instagram and you just see a sea of work and it is overwhelming because you see the standard that's out there and then you think okay so I need to be like that 
to get weddings like that. I need to behave like that. And for so long, I would just kind of hold back because I am a bubbly, outgoing person. And I would kind of definitely water that down in the beginning because I really just wanted to book weddings and I didn't want them to not take me seriously. And and then I would have those weddings and we were not a fit. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Like, why don't you do that? Like, mm, that's not really us. And I was thinking like, where did it go wrong? And then as soon as I kind of was more authentic and started putting myself out there, more kind of true to who I am, that's when the connection completely changed with couples. And I think people need to remember that because even I think everybody markets differently and but you're, what you're doing is you're marketing for the future because yes people look at your work now but very often you're actually targeting couples who haven't even got engaged yet so when they do get engaged they're in your inbox saying girl I've just I just got engaged are you available love your work loved it forever yeah. those are my best clients the ones who have followed for so long and they're like they don't even question how much she costs because they're so invested in you and your brand and your personality and your world that when it comes to the wedding nobody else is like it's not even a question i get those yeah, messages where they say like i've not even we're not even i've not even met my husband yet but when i do <laughs> yeah. you're doing our wedding it has exactly. to be and it's the all, that's all comes back on your brand like you say yeah you're, you're you're marketing to a specific type of couple as well which is brilliant you can actually do that because you know your, your style is going to fit with them and I do the same thing with mine and mm. I changed my branding years ago to target the type of couples that I want for me because I want that you know really good fun couple who want a, a lot of energy and a lot of life at the wedding mm. As years ago my marketing was probably all about me you know standing singing and trying to look cool it's not about that it's about the couple and I want to attract that type of couple and because I know it's going to be an amazing wedding and I want to enjoy it as much as as mm -hmm. much as you do you know um yeah brilliant brilliant and and uh you know the number one place for doing for for getting across that personality and your brand and is is well predominantly Instagram but social media mm. uh, is obviously huge and uh and I know because I've known you for years and been following you for, and I remember that wedding we did years ago you were on it, so like so, selfies, videos, Instagram stories, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "I need to talk my game." It's exhausting, like, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it was. It was more like, I feel like really, just made me feel like I really need to talk my game because, like, I've gotten a, I'm, I've, I was a bit lazy, and then I turned up to that wedding, and you were all over it, and then, and it was great because I was just jumping in on your stuff and resharing <laughs> your stuff. So I was like, "Oh, I just, I don't need to do my own. I just use." The <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it just made me like oh my god like how it's at the start like I thought I was doing okay with social media and selfies but I need to step it up and obviously consistently doing that over the over the years like you say is is attracting people that will follow you on that journey whether they're engaged or not and to the point where they just that it's inevitable that they're going to book you when they do come to look for a photographer so uh can you tell us about your in your course, your Instagram course um, that you offer? Because uh, it's on your website, <clears throat> Instagram for business, any type yeah, of business. Yeah, so any or? any type of business. So I've kind of taught florists, wedding planners, stylists, creatives, um, stationers, like any type of business. Always. It is the same marketing fundamentals. If you were to say set up an Instagram account tomorrow for this business. I'd be like, okay, let's go. Like I could, I could do that. Cause it is the, the number one thing with social media is your content. Content is key. If you've got content, you've got a business and good quality content is really important because that's ultimately what kind of attracts clients and customers. Um, so good quality content and with the course it teaches everything from posting to stories to reels because there's so much to instagram and it is can it, it can be overwhelming especially because it's constantly changing and for everybody they're like oh the algorithm's rubbish the algorithm's out to get me like get out of that mindset like for me when someone says it to me i'm like I don't want to hear it like it's the worst excuse ever the algorithm um, really doesn't care about you yeah, like it doesn't care about you. You're not that important. Like, get over it. <laughs> so you just have to work harder. And 
don't take it so seriously. Everyone's like, oh, my engagement's down. Well, I say, okay, so why is your engagement down? And they're like, oh, it's down because of the algorithm. I'm like, what are you doing to engage? <laughs> and that, that's, that's the thing. You've got to remember the clues in the name, be social on social media. You've got to be social. So you can't just post mm -hmm. and ghost and post this glorious photo and then expect loads of likes and engagement. And it's very different if you have a large following because you don't have to work as hard. But if you have a smaller following, you have got to engage with every single comment. If you get a DM from a story, you reply to that comment, you reply to that message, comment on other people's works. So don't be an island. I think that's a mistake most of the people do. And I think we're all guilty of it. You just scroll and you're like, oh, that's nice. Tap, tap, tap. Like take the time and comment. If you like that, message them be like, that's really, that's beautiful. I love that. Like the composition of that stunning. Like actually engage with other people because what goes around comes around and you will build relationships. You will build connections. The amount of people I've made friends at other countries and ended up working with them. And you form those connections. And yeah, so I always say to people, engage, engage, engage. And that yeah. is how you get engagement on your It's net networking, isn't it? 100%. Really? And so I always say to people with Instagram, don't let it overwhelm you. And trust me, it can, like to all of us, like we're all guilty of going down a comparisonitis like like rabbit mm -hmm. hole when you're like oh my gosh my work doesn't look like this that and that does happen but if you stay in your lane and just focus on your account and putting out into the world what you want back you're on to a really good one so top tips are only post what you want more of so you have to be you have to be brutal so you, you do have to create your work so if there was a wedding that wasn't your vibe, that isn't the cup of wedding you want to do again, don't post it. And people were like, well, what do you mean? I, if there's a wedding that wasn't wasn't my vibe, I didn't like the venue or they didn't treat me well, or, like it wasn't my, it, it wasn't like a fit for me and my business or where I want to go in the future, I won't post it. And that is, that is tough. But you've got to remember what you post out there it's what you're going to get more of it, mm. it does happen um so correct. yeah right if you wh whatever you put out in the world you hope would come come back to yeah. you so it's putting that stuff out there yeah i want to get into like kind of the fundamentals on the social media because mm. i mean i get asked this all the time and you hear it banded around is when is the best time to post and what things should i post and then i suppose why we can start with that first one when i mean i, I think everybody's got a different answer for this one but when do you think is a good time to post uh, in the week or or times of day in so your best, experience in my experience uh seven to nine in the morning is good some people are waking up what do we do in the morning we typically sit in bed on our phone yeah. so seven to nine in the morning so it's the commute time as well so people couples who are commuting or working so seven to nine in the morning or seven to ten at night so i'd never post at one o'clock in the afternoon two o'clock three o'clock because no one's around the, okay. only people, the only people around are people who like us who are working <laughs> so, who are self-employed um so seven even six six to nine in the morning would that ch would um, that change then if you were targeting other photographers like other wedding photographers or stuff if, for, if, like yeah. if you're doing educational stuff would you then yeah, think, if you're... Oh, i'll talk i'll do it at lunchtime because i know we're all sat at home on our computers That's anyway thing. you just got to know <clears throat> your niche and know your audience so yeah if it's education and you're targeting yeah other photographers you can open it up a bit later so yeah till 12 will be fine because they're just dossing about in their phones and then in the evening when people are on the sofa, watching TV, I say with air quotes, watching TV on their phones, eating, that's also a really great time. Yeah. Of course <laughs> so, they are. How many that's times have I mean. you sat down to watch TV at night and then you've got your phone in, in, I, it's oh, on, and I you're doing this? It was so bad. What happened to us as a generation? It's so bad, it's isn't it's it? Awful. It's, I, it's, I'm, watching, I'm watching one day on Netflix and oh. I've just it's set. The episode we watched last night was set in like 93, 94, and he's just bought a mobile phone oh. and the other character's like, what do you need one of them for? Stupid. Oh. And and I'm like, I'm never getting one of those. And we both, I looked at Jay last night, who was on a, <laughs> on reels. And I was like, <laughs> do, you remember, do you ever remember a time where like it's, we didn't? 
Oh, it, that's, anyway, it's a blessing. It's it's a, a great thing. Also, just it's such a shame at the same time, isn't it? As a generation, yeah, yeah it's a weird. Like, yeah, but it's but it's great for business. Hundred percent, uh, is, great for business. <laughs> just to go back, it's might, probably an obvious answer, but um, is is today still a good time to set up an Instagram account? Yeah. Is that still the number one place for you? Uh, yeah, for photography, yes, because it's a visual platform. But then as a videographer, probably probably even more so because of reels, because the algorithm and Instagram loves video content. You've got to see how the industry has changed massively. Like TikTok mm. has exploded. Everything now is video. Everything is Real. video preference. Reels, TikToks. Like mm. so if you are a videographer, even more so. And I think, I know a lots of videographers are like, Reels and TikTok has absolutely killed videography. Any skill, because anyone with an iPhone, well, yeah, I, okay, I totally see that. But you've got to see... The way social media works is that it's just so hungry for content and just you just gotta put content out there. So yeah, yeah it's definitely be set quick up as well, isn't it? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent set up an Instagram account. Think about your bio, your description. So the name in the bio, that's obviously SEO focused. So that's obviously gonna come up as well. For me personally, I just have my name. You can have London wedding photographer in the bio, so that that comes up. But for me, You've also got to remember the flip side. If you're somebody's DM, I'd rather just be Rebecca with an emoji rather than specific London talk. But that's a personal choice because I want to kind of break that kind of mold. You want to connect with the person. Like yeah. it comes back to having your, your name on as your business name. Like exactly. they're dealing with a person rather than a, a corporation. Yeah. So that's also really important. So your bio, your profile picture. This is also another massive tip. Loads of people go for their logo and I'm just like, no, it's literally just you. So show that face, show that face behind the brand. So having your profile picture is really, really important because when that shows up on stories on the main home feed, they will recognize your face and get to know and it's all familiar and it's the no like and trust factor. So people get to know you, they get to like you and then ultimately get to trust trust you so it's all a personal really brand yeah. yeah so important yeah me and adam are big on that and certainly one thing i've always said right from the very start my career and also adam and adam started you've got to put your face up there because not a lot of other people are doing it and it's how do you right. connecting with your work as well as the person which makes a massive difference um i've got i've just been writing a few things down because my, my brain's going all over the place <laughs> i love what you're taking Taking notes, you can just play this back, Howard. It's fine. <laughs> no, he's taking but I love notes. how this is an education. This is great. Howard doesn't listen to our podcast. It's me, you know that, what? It's me that goes back to everything. Yeah, but I do. I actually what I put it on when it goes on YouTube. I actually watch it because I know it's good for the algorithm to watch it all the way through. So I've always got it on running in the background, and I sometimes end up watching myself for an hour. What, what a weirdo I am. What a weird one. So what I've just written down here, um, Rebecca, I suppose another question for you is posts, reels or stories, or is it a com combination of all them together? Which works best? Yeah, go, go, go. All of them. <laughs> I know that's not the answer people want because we're like, oh, it's just so much work. And I get it. Social media is a job. Let's. There are people we pay to do this. Now, I pay somebody to do one of my other accounts because it is a job. You've got to remember, large corporations have an entire marketing team to mm. do all of this. So when it is just you as a creative, you're like, oh, man, like I've got to do marketing. I've got to do this. And we didn't go into this job to be marketers. Is that the right term? Marketers? Marketers? I don't know. The Market, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we, we did this job because you love to sing. Adam loves to do video, but we didn't go, oh, I'm going to do this job because I want to be posting stories and doing video. It just comes a part of the job. So you've got to cover all the bases. So yes, you've got to do posts. Carousels are preferred. Carousels are really good for engagement because they show more than one image. Um, also top tip, if you are doing a carousel, make the second photo equally as amazing because very often when people scroll, it defaults to the second picture. You'll see that a lot. So yeah. make the second photo as impactful as the rest. Reels, yeah, reels are incredible for getting your content, content out there in another way. So use trending audio, everywhere. that's a little arrow and try and choose audios that are under 
7,000 videos. So if you, you can, if you tap the audio, you can see how many reels have been made of that mm. audio. Anything under seven is preferable. So you have more rate, more success rate of getting it picked up. But the goal isn't to go viral. And this is people are like, what? But I want my reel to go viral. Yes and no. I have had reels that go viral and I've had reels that don't. But you've also got to remember what is the ultimate goal of posting that post or that reel. You're not doing it for your peers. And you have to remember this. You're not doing it to impress your peers or other photographers, other videographers, other people, you're doing it to target your future clients. So remember that. So try and remember what is the purpose of that reel? Are you, what are you targeting? What is, what's the point of it? So yeah. I think, I think people do get swept up in like, this has to go viral, has to go, no, it doesn't have to go viral. If that reel books your wedding, that is the goal. And that's what's going through my head, whether it's my education account <clears> or my <throat> photography account, the goal is, Okay, I'm going to do this reel because I want it. I want to show my versatility for this particular shoot. What happens in the shoot? So I attract a couple, a couple who wants a similar style. That's the goal. Yeah, sometimes it, I've yeah. I've posted, I, I've posted stuff that's like a, a bride that's already following me, but then mm -hmm. she sees that and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I've, I've not seen anything of his for a couple of weeks, and it just reminds her, and then oh, I'll just send you latest post. I, I I do really want to book you like I, you know I've just been busy and it just so that's not getting me any new followers it's not getting me viral but it's like I say if it gets yeah. a booking then I mean one post one booking that's, that's the thing and I'll be really honest when I had like 2,000 followers and now I'm at I don't know how many it doesn't everyone's like oh I don't have a large following it doesn't matter and i think people need to get out of this mindset you can buy a blue tick now let's call it what it is you can buy a blue tick now so that doesn't mean anything and you now have the swipe up you have a link in stories when years ago you could only have a link in a story if you had ten thousand followers and then magically mm -hmm. overnight anybody could pop a link in so it doesn't make any difference if you have a large following or a small following the trick is ask yourself how many weddings do i want a year do you want 30? Do you want 40? Brilliant. So what you need to do is create content and book and base and entice and attract 30 to 40 couples, not photographers, not videographers, couples. Mm. So that is always the goal. So yeah, mix it up, reels, stories every single day. I can't stress that enough. You've got to post stories every single day because more people will watch you and stalk you <laughs> than like a post. Because there are some people who will hate follow you, let's be honest, who will see your work and they just won't like it because it's either triggering to them or they don't like it or they're just, they don't, people have, people are weird on the internet, aren't they? Let's be honest. Mm. But they will watch you on stories. <laughs> so, and also the way your algorithm they'll, does they'll work. They'll watch you and they'll grumble as they're, oh, I hate this person. <laughs> well, yeah, it does, it does keep happen. Clicking, keep clicking. Like, I, 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 I read so many kind of blogs and watch so many videos about the psychology of social media and people are weird. Um, but with stories, um, the way the algorithm works is it will target way more of your following than a post will. Um, so people say, oh, the algorithm's rubbish. I could just post stories and just absolutely hammer the stories to direct them to the post. So then your engagement will go up, but you've got to feed the account. And then as soon as somebody has watched your story or engages in it, your account will naturally be in their algorithm more. So stories are always beneficial. So would you say post story, say I'm not, I'm not going to do a post today or a reel. Why not? You still recommend, <laughs> you still recommend doing a story. Yes. Every day. hundred percent. One or two. Yeah. Story. At least, at least two. Yeah. Um, because they're dropping every day. Yeah. Wow. So stories, it, so for me, I'm like you, I don't post a post every single day because you don't know how much content you have. Or sometimes I'm like, no, I no, no, have a caption for today or I'm busy or my child is doing something that I just get distracted. <laughs> so, but stories every single day. And the idea is you always want to be in your followers' home feed. So if you open up your Instagram now, your stories. Oh, and, there you okay. are, Rebecca. Okay. Yes, 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 Rebecca. There yes, you miss. go. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it i'm doing it so if you go to your main home feed you'll see four slash five people in the top little circles <laughs> look look who's number one 
He's number one. Adam Wing Films, look. There you go. So you always want to be in that top five of other people's accounts. So that's that's the trick, is that that is the goal. So you, you don't want to aim for like loads of likes. Like you want to just have that constant presence. So then people are like, oh, what's she up to? And that will help your account. That is great for the algorithm, great for engagement. And then you're always just in the forefront of yeah. other people's mind. So I that's, mean, I I, that's the goal. I don't know what the the average kind of user experience is, but I from my stories, I'll go on, like you say, the home feed. The first person, which is in at this moment is you. Um, hey. But I'll only look at the first five or six, and then I'll yeah. go, oh, that's enough, and I'm done. Yeah. So, like, if you're not in that top however many, you're dead, aren't you? Yeah. I go a bit deeper. I go to at least seven oh. or eight. Oh, yes. And then I've oh, got a lot of, got a and lot then of refresh it. his hands. So, yeah, I, oh yeah so i would just say that like start small but you've got to remember if you build it they will come so people if you haven't been posting stories and you just think oh like I, I don't do that start doing it but remember you don't have to always show your face i think people are like i haven't got makeup on i've got a really boring live da, 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 excuses excuses um people will watch absolutely anything it well, doesn't this... even, even if you're walking your dog, people, people love that. They want to see your personal life. It does, the whole purpose of stories is it's not meant to be polished. It's not meant to be. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to make pretty templates. I mean, there's filters now, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I encourage you to make it as real as possible. Me and, um, me and Adam launched a course of our own, actually. This is just mm. 2020 and it was for wedding videographers and Adam teaches the wedding film making side and I taught the business side and one of the common things with a lot of our students they're always saying I, I just don't know what to post I feel like I've not got enough content and I think we get I think we gave them lists of so look you can yeah. you're having a cup of coffee you're chatting to a client you're working your computer people were really stuck on what to post um so yeah I suppose there's a question for you really what 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 is good to post I mean when it's a story I suppose it's everything isn't it but can you give us some ideas or like post ideas? Yeah, okay. So I would say to you for stories, my philosophy is everything is content. <laughs> That's my yeah. personal philosophy for stories. Um, for stories, absolutely anything and everything. Posts. Okay. Is this for videographers or photographers or I kind of across the general. board? Kind of across okay. the board. Okay, let's so let's start. So for a post. Top tips for a wedding morning. My top 10 tips for having the best wedding morning. Step one, and then do a carousel. Pick an area with lots of windows and natural light. Step two, don't go last for hair and makeup. Step three, have your items late. So also being educational and helpful. So that's also really helpful to couples because it shows you as an expert in your field. That's one post. And that is and that one post, tips for the wedding morning. That's like, what, 10 points, 10 slides, boom. If you're a videographer, you could then have a mega mix, a montage of all your wedding mornings because you have so much content. And I think people forget, as photographers and videographers, you have so much content just sat on your camera roll. Mm. Don't let it die a death. Yeah. Next idea, you could be top 10, like my, my favorite songs for walking down the aisle. Another post could be this year's trend predictions. It could be bows. It could, another previous year was like champagne towers or it could be trends. Another post could be um, a post about yourself. So I always encourage people to introduce themselves to the grid every one to 20 squares, maybe one to 10. But it's really important to introduce yourself as well because yeah. very often they just see a sea of work and they're like, oh, who is this? And always remember a post about yourself is always the most liked and engaged post every single time. Always, yeah. Always. It's really, it's really annoying when I'm trying to look at the other players that are on my <laughs> upcoming wedding, and I just see pretty photos, and I'm like, I want to know who I'm working yeah, with. And exactly. I know that I'm not a bride, but I just think it works the same. Yeah, break down those 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 barriers and don't hide behind those pretty squares. Introduce yourself. So, yeah. introduction post and a, a cliche is facts about yourself that people don't know because what happens is people go oh i'm the same i also love that and they comment about it so doing an introduction post um i'm also really inspired by 
audios in reels. So I'll often scroll reels and hear an audio that's really vibey. And I'm like, oh, I know just the wedding. That will go perfectly with that. So a really good factor of kind of adding that into your content is introducing video. So if you're a photographer, having a little snippet of video at the beginning. I remember with Reels, a mistake people make is they just do like a slideshow of photos. The purpose of Reels is video. So always start your Reel with a bit of video if you can, yeah. preferably. Um, if you are doing a, 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 po a Reel of just photos, that, that's fine. But try and have some sort of... So Maybe. like when, when I see photographers who will have the, the first, the, the opening of the reel is like just the sh behind the scenes shot of them shooting a couple and then yeah. for like a few seconds and then it Perfect. cuts into like a slideshow of images. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. with reels, you only need somebody to view it three seconds for it to count as a view. And ideally you want to hook them. So it's called a hook in the kind of video content world. So you want to hook them in the first couple of seconds with a catchy title. So for reels, really easy things are like point of view. So point of view, you have a outdoor wedding, boom, video, tsh, 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 all the photos. That's another idea. Another post could be um, a post about florals, bridesmaids, content always performs very, very well. Um, and also look at your audience. Who are the majority of your audience in your account? Is it women? Is it men? So that's also a massive factor into your engagement in your account. Another post could be um, your, it could be different types of, that's the thing, you've got so much content. It just depends what kind of content you have sat what, on What there. you've, all them examples are, are all giving value though as well, because a lot of what you've suggested there is like advice for couples or inspiration for brides. And that's actually giving them something that they feel like grateful for well, that's, seeing that's, that. That's the thing. I, I'm a massive believer in putting out and giving. Give like I'm a massive believer in karma because you can't just take, 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 take with social media. You have to give something back and give people a reason to keep coming back to your account. Because as lovely as it is to have all this beautiful imagery and beautiful content, adding value somewhere is really, really important. And especially with couples, because in our wedding world, we do this every weekend, so we know the best times to get married. We know how long our drinks reception should be. We know how long group shots are gonna take. So tell people. And a really good idea for content is what are the most common questions you get from clients? So very often they say, how long do I need for group shots? Do a post about it. How long, how long does this take? What are your best tips for ceremonies? Well, if it's summertime, this time. If it's winter, you don't wanna get married at four o'clock because it's too dark. Post, and, and the odds are you've got a picture or a video for it. The benefits of an unplugged ceremony do a post about it show a post without people holding their phones out and this is an unplugged ceremony and why you should have it they're saying i could do a whole podcast just about content it's great that's, I mean, that's generating, <laughs> but you definitely put me on the spot there <laughs> i just want to oh, can i i want to just go back a little bit for something that you mentioned earlier on rebecca regards music for your post so um what music i mean I'm, I'm asking this because i do when i do like a reel sometimes or a story and if i'm choosing music i automatically think let's use one that's got a billion downloads and it's no, no. times and you what you said earlier it's almost like the opposite of what i was thinking and quite often it's because i like the song and i think oh well, brilliant. it's been <laughs> got like two million i've got to use downloads. fred again on my thing like everyone's doing it. I always use similar music, but your philosophy is different. It's not, don't use them ones. It's use one that's not got as much. So if you're doing stories, post any type of music because that right. doesn't matter. But if you're posting a reel, definitely do, preferably do trending. Sometimes I'm like, I just really like this song. So I'm going to use it. But if you are going by the trending method, and there's a reason why it is trending, because Instagram are like, we really like this. It's doing really well. It's trending for a reason. So they do give you pointers. Um, so don't go for, for example, a really good example is this week, um, Beyonce's country song. Like, And you'll see so many people use it for reels. And don't get me wrong, I love that song, but am I going to use it for a reel? No, because it's never going to get any reach because... It's going to get lost in the sea of... It's going to get lost in the sea. Taylor Swift, aren't you? Yeah, so right. don't go for a reel. So if, if you tap the audio and it you scroll and it will show, it will tell you the number of how many reels and posts have been created with that track. If it's over 7,000, avoid. And under four, 
brilliant, even better. The less, the better. And if you get in early before it goes mega viral, even better. Yeah, I suppose this ties into your fact that you're trying to market yourself to future couples that might be 20, 30, 40 weddings per year. You don't want 10,000. Yeah. You, you're niching it down. That's but also right. Like, yeah. that, that's a good point. If if you're getting on those smaller ones, there is still a chance that they might go bananas. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you jump on a Beyonce, it's already gone bananas and you're just <laughs> yeah. going to get lost. Aren't you? Yeah. But okay. that's the thing, like you do want those views. You do want to get pushed in front of more eyes because that is the it's idea. It's tempting, isn't it? It yeah. is. So yeah, definitely going for a trending track is always going to be preferable. Um, but with viral, just be prepared for if you if it does go viral, for the type of people it does open it up to. And it's not always the people you want, is what I will say. Um, because then when that happens, you open it up to a large audience and people say anything and everything. So be prepared. Yeah. I like, had a couple on early days of TikTok in lockdown that went million views on TikTok. But did it get me anywhere? Did it lead to anything? No. no. Nothing. Because it was no. just the whole like, you know, a million people saw it great, but none of them were engaged brides no. that were actually interested. So, yeah, it's knowing your audience, like I say. All right. Um, so have you got have you got three things that you'd recommend doing for somebody who really want to grow their Instagram account? Oh, uh, three things. Post stories every day and yeah. often. Engage with every single comment, every single DM, everything. Engagement is key for growing because you just that's the goal is to engage because as soon as you engage they'll come back because they know you um and then content think about the content you're putting out there what makes you different what sets you apart and the type of content so good quality so uploading high res um uploading videos that are 4k or the highest quality possible um if you are posting videos of you talking, using captions, because typically people view lots of the time without audio, um, or they're like, okay, what's she saying? Okay, cool. Or they might be procrastinating at work and they just want to read the caption. So always use captions. And also that opens up to more people who can't necessarily, who might be hard of hearing or might not necessarily speak English as their first language. So captions are really, really important. Um, but the quality of your content is important so if very often i love doing instagram analysis for people and accounts that's something i also do with mentoring and they'd say like what's wrong with my account and i'd be like okay it's very hibbledy pibbledy so you might see people who post kind of graphics and like pick and i'm just like this has nothing to do with your business this is not attractive as a business and you've got to put yourself into the mindset of your client so if you're a couple looking at this account what what does this person sell what do they offer and if you see like a happy birthday post and a cupcake and you're just like from google you're like well what is this um so really think about the aesthetics of your grid yeah um, mine's a, so i've admit mine's a bit like that i've got you know one minute it's a video it's a shot of a couple then it's a screenshot of something then it's a picture of me then it's a something else and it doesn't really i will flow. say it's harder for videographers it's a lot harder I will say really really hard um because of the screen grabs and imagery but like it is hard um so I say to people with that just as long as it's consistent and there is a, a as a, in terms yeah. of kind of color but grading even, it's fine you can <laughs> you're posting videos and reels but you can the actual cover photo can you can use but nice images a, and, and have a, like color scheme that flows because that's one thing I hate I like if I'm guilty of one thing, I look at my grid and I go, uh, it doesn't look very pleasing. I don't know, but this week, like I said, change the cover photo to a, a, like a thumbnail shot of the couple. So it's not just like a random thumbnail of a glass, unless that is the aesthetic and it looks, it, it, or a black it vibes screen. in. The worst yeah, is the but black oh screen. God, when people post black screens, I'm like, no. <laughs> so I, those are probably my top tips um, for Instagram and just, really think about but I don't overthink it at the same time I think gone are the days of these really long heartfelt captions people aren't really reading them anymore at the moment so just don't worry too much about the captions 
yes, captions are important because they also get picked up in the algorithm, blah, blah, blah. But don't go like long and hard every single time. Mix it up. Um, hashtags, okay. think about your hashtags. Again, don't go massive with your hashtags because it's not going to get picked up. Um, certain things do get banned. So yeah, just think about the quality of your content and always think about the brand, your brand. Is this on brand? It, does it sit within my brand? Um, it, collaborations. Oh yeah, that's not another top tip. The collaboration feature is amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. the best thing to happen to Instagram in years. So use that as much as possible is what I would say. That okay. is- Okay, Let, let's just add to that then. <laughs> who, who do you recommend collaborating with? We've had this discussion a little bit in the, the past. Suppliers. So the, the venues, the venues collaborating with them is yeah. often yeah. elite. With, the with, well, it's yes, it is, but they're they're not very often going to accept. No, because they have a you know they it's want so awkward. They, they don't want those posts on the grid and they ignore you, and then it's like. Mm. Okay. Oh, well, but if you're going to do it for suppliers, then you're going to have to make the real about them as well, aren't you? So it's beneficial for them to actually collaborate and share it on their on their grid. Yeah, I think it depends. If the person's actually in the real, then yes, collab. If they're not, completely pointless. Yeah. Um, so you can't just you can't just collaborate you can't just like, oh, just gonna ten, collab ten with local them. venues for the sake yeah. of it. I've seen I've seen that happen. I've seen people try it. Oh, people will, and it's it's and don't get me wrong, I get declined by stuff, and I'm also I'm, I'm I don't get offended because I'm like it might not fit with their grid, it might not be their aesthetic, and then the real does really well. I'm like, well, it's your loss. So <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but with the collaboration, didn't want you anyway. Didn't want you anyway. I just created some content for you for free. I did you a solid. Um, we can jump on this and get in with the benefit. Um, but yeah, I, I love the collaboration feature. If I can collaborate with every post with somebody, I'm like, right, who can I collaborate with? And I DM saying, hey, won't be offended if you decline. And I generally emphasize like, it's cool. Um, okay. It's always beneficial. You follow up with a DM. Yeah. You follow up with a DM. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. This if is, you just, if is... you, yeah, if you straight up collab and they're like, because there also there is also a bit of a glitch with the collab feature it hasn't been fixed so even if you tag somebody and didn't collab it says that you've invited them to collab um i don't know if you have this i don't know if this is me um but then they can't accept it's weird okay. so there is a few okay, little yeah. bugs with that but i send a dm saying hey I invited you to collab no hard, no hard feelings if you don't want to or for some people i say you're welcome to collab for 24 hours and then reject. So then you get the benefit because the success of a post or reel is the first 24 hours, ideally. Um, so they can decline. So very often a wedding plan I work with lots, it might not go with her grid or sure accept and collab for a bit and then she might remove it later on. So there's there's lots of ways you can do it. This is an aside, but um, I'm getting, at the minute, there's a new film coming out, uh, Hollywood film, Godzilla, the latest Godzilla King Kong um, blockbuster. Oh. And it's directed by a guy called Adam Wingard. <gasps> so, I'm, like, at the minute, there's I think there was a new trailer. The film's coming soon. There was a trailer out the other day. And I'm getting bombarded with collabs and tags for, oh, from the studios, the actors, no. the, like, people wanting to share this film. Because my Instagram's Adam Wing Films. Yeah. And I think people are going to type the director in, Adam Wing, uh, and they're seeing me and going, oh, that must be him. And oh, I'm right. getting tagged in this this Hollywood film constantly, and it's uh, people asking to collaborate with me, and I'm just declining. I was I was tempted the other day to accept it because I, I got tagged by like a, a, <laughs> an, a an Instagram account of a big studio in Hollywood. I was like, oh, if I just accept oh, this and like <laughs> see what happens. But yeah, I was like, oh, this go away, Godzilla. It's not well, me. You, it's you, you can change your settings, so basically, no one can tag you unless you approve. So that's also something I do. Okay, yeah. I think I've got that on. I think that's right. Because yeah. if you get getting requests saying that I've been tagged in this, I keep that's having so to go on funny. and remove the tag. But it, it's, Good I mean, for it's, you, Adam. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> but part of me was like, I want, maybe I'll just let people think that I directed the latest Godzilla film. Just for a laugh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's something I'm, something I'm really dealing with at the minute. Uh, it's an, it's annoying. I've got to keep declining these things. Oh, <laughs> just, it's a hard life. Little, uh, little anecdote for you there. Uh, and because it, it, I mean, it beats what I used to get all the time. Was my personal account is Wingstagram, and I used to get tagged in pictures of chicken wings all the time. Um, 
So it's out better of interest, than that. what is your favorite chicken wing flavor? Uh, mm, I like it. There's a there's a place in Manchester called Bunny Jackson's, best okay. chicken wings I've had in the UK. Okay, I need to add uh, this to notes because I'm moving up They north. do like a jack. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny, what's it educational stuff for just 10 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Bun, bunny. <laughs> but bunny Jackson's in okay. Manchester. Um, you pay per wing, so it's like 20p oh. per wing. Uh, it, oh, incredible. There's a Thanks. there's a Jack Daniels bourbon oh. glaze one that they do with honey and sesame seeds, something or other. That's that's the one. That's that's my answer. I was really intrigued because I love chicken wings. My husband is obsessed. So <laughs> See, this is the content the, people the, really want, guys. Just, I just wanted to add, you mentioned quality content and post, making sure your content that you post, specific, mm -hmm. like, especially on your post, is quality. Um, like, can you define that? I'm, I'm thinking from a non-photographer and videographer businesses um, that might either have to ask photographers for photographs from the wedding or just post stuff that they've taken on their phone um you know is there a benefit to having professionally like photographed images um and do they have to think about the aesthetics of like the font they use for the captions and uh, uh oh. the and all that sort of stuff do you think that makes a difference yeah that's yeah that, that, that's, that's production value that. you know i i would have said years ago yes 100 percent, get a professional photographer but now in the TikTok era, everything is so different. And yes, TikTok is very different to Instagram. However, I feel like the way it's going is going a bit more towards TikTok because everything TikTok does, Instagram tries to do. And you've got to bear this in mind. So if you're like, I can't go on TikTok, I'm not about singing and dancing. It's not, it's not even like that anymore. Yes, you do no, get it really that. Isn't, no. It really isn't. Any major massive brand is on TikTok because that is where it's all but it's is. very silly now isn't it it's, it's all really like silly. products like, shops that's the thing so i always say to people not necessarily years ago i said yeah hire a professional photographer good but now you get people who are just filming just in their home without i mean a good light's always good that's always preferable <laughs> good lighting um but nowadays people are creating quality of creating content out of thin air so i always say to people done is better than perfect i will say because i think often as humans we're like oh it's not perfect it's not perfect i can't i'm not going to post that because it's not perfect or and you keep saying that before you know it it's a week before you know it is a month and that yeah. could have been a day missed in front of a customer so i would actually say not necessarily i would say in the beginning just get content out there because what ultimately what are you trying to sell are you selling you're ultimately selling a product aren't you you're selling videography you're selling photography yeah. you're selling music and singing if you're selling um stationery i people it's amazing what you can do with a phone these days so i do say to people if you are a small business immerse yourself in content and look at content out there look at pinterest look at tiktok look at etsy look at instagram and look at the different ways people are creating content in your niche um and don't be afraid to do it yourself because it, it is amazing what you can do these days canva is really really good fiverr is really really good for hiring somebody else to do stuff so don't try and be too perfect because i think um there's a lot of magic and beauty when stuff isn't perfect and i think nowadays people don't really always want perfectionism hmm. um so yes, good quality content. So make sure it is good and you're happy to put your name to that, but don't completely just think it has to be completely perfect. Obviously, I always say to people, just think about your brand aesthetic. What are your kind of brand vibes? What are your values? Um, what does it look and feel like? What is your typical customer? What are you trying to achieve? That I will say, but don't stick to one way of doing things because everything is changing social media it's like you said before you do all that and then your most engaged post is the personal yeah, one of exactly. like phone or like you know i i i recently i've won a wedding industry award which oh, got, no. and they always they always get loads more likes than my film content um oh. because people like just like to you know celebrate that and then yeah. we've had a little a little boy as well so that 
again just because i mean i get that that's a major life event and of course people like that it's really cute we've had a baby um but it just it blows up compared to all of my relatable it's Mm. more relatable and as humans we want to relate because we're all the same as much as you see all these massive brands and businesses with loads of followers behind it is a human and it's typically one person who started out making a business and especially if you are a small business owner i always say to people own that don't hide behind, especially when they write buyers, like, we are a massive team. It's literally just you and your laptop. No, let's, let's go. To <laughs> you, you and your um, wife. Uh, yeah. Just, so yeah. I always say to people, own that and share that and don't be afraid to be vulnerable and let people in in your world. Don't be an island. Be social and share that side of you because you'd be amazed how many people refer to that and talk talk about that with you because very often they will find a common link between that and that's might be the defining factor on why they choose you over a competitor because they go oh we really like to do that too oh i saw you traveled here and i saw you do eat this oh we love that and that's what's going to make you memorable over all the other people out there so i say to people don't focus on what everybody else is doing just focus on you and being the most authentic you and getting yourself out there and being memorable so that's what you want you don't have to be singing and dancing and lip syncing and doing these glamorous reels if you are putting your work out there your product out there and if you have a good quality product that you have to share and offer couples and clients you've got a good business and you just got to thank share god that. i don't have to do no because that's not that's <laughs> I, don't get me wrong. I definitely did that in 2020 because i am that type i don't of person, think i could i don't think but I could do it. that's not for everybody mm. and i always say to people like don't do stuff that isn't you do what is authentic to you in your brand if you you could be there are so many faceless accounts I t- go into instagram and type in faceless account and there are people who are blowing up doing really really well who aren't even showing their faces so there's so many possibilities but just yeah. be true to you don't try and copy somebody else because you think oh they're doing that i should just do you and believe in yourself and as soon as that happens it all kind of slots into place and then you're like oh i should have done this sooner yeah this is I've all just got, like... just got a little note down sorry adam um i know she touched on you said you use canva and something else before i was going to ask that do you use any external apps or are there any apps that you'd recommend to make posting easier or would you, or scheduling or what do you use any, or do you, is it all done? Yeah. In- um, yeah. Planoly. I love Planoly for just laying out the aesthetic of my grid. So everything is kind of balanced. Planoly. Planoly. Yeah. So, right. so that is a grid planner and that's a really good way to see what your content will look like before you post it. Cause I would never have, stuff that clashes and for me because I shoot all over the world my pictures do clash (laughs) because the Sahara doesn't look like Santorini and it it, it can clash so I kind of balance it with black and white pictures (laughs) so Planoly is a really good app for that and I recommend people doing that um, to see what their content looks like because you can post blind and just be like YOLO I'm just gonna post this but Mm. in the early days of a brand new account you do want your grid to look aesthetically pleasing because yeah. that's typically what people follow you in the beginning. If you come across a new account, you're like, oh, this looks nice. And then, yeah, so Planner is really good. Um, I love Canva for the graphics and that's my education account. Canva's amazing. Like that's the best, is it 10 pounds maybe a month for Canva Pro? That's the best money you ever spend as a small business owner. <laughs> um, love, yeah, love that. Um. Captions, if you are a business who was talking to camera, um, captions are really, really good. It's quite pricey, um, but that's really, really good for captions that are punctuated and set. you can change the colours. Yeah, and... better looking ones, yeah. Yeah, because the ones on Instagram aren't very good. For stories, it's mm-hmm. fine, but if you're posting a long educational video, that's really good. Um, what else do I like? I love. I, I, I use Splice for video, and that's got a. Oh, ca- Splice, yeah. That's got a captions option, and it's actually pretty good, and it's free. There you go. Honestly, the less subscriptions, the better. CapCut is amazing. Yeah. The videos, and there's so many templates now. And this is the thing when people say, "Oh, like I can't do real." Like there are templates in CapCut mm. for free, which do it for you. So somebody's taking the time 
to make a really cool template, just chuck your content in there and then you just reap the benefits. Um, <clears throat> CapCut, I love, yeah, CapCut is um, InShot. I like the simplicity of InShot uh, for adding photos. It's a lot more precise and just a drag and drop situation. I like that for just making quick videos. Um, I like Vixer for fonts. Um, so Vixer, again, is another, so I um, probably might make my life a lot harder. I will edit in one app and then put it into another app to use the fonts. So Vixers are really nice for aesthetic fonts um, for, for reels. Um, I think those are my most ones. Oh, scroll, scroll is really nice. So scroll is really great for layering photos and photo and videos on a carousel, which makes it look all arty and then unfold. Uh, also. Yeah. 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 Okay. So those are my favorite apps. Apps are your friend. <laughs> Use an app. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's brilliant. That because yeah, if you can make your posts so your reels look a little bit better, a little bit different, mm. a bit more professional than your competition. And if apps like this are going to help, then it's it's worth doing. Certainly it? for us, photo, video, or visual. Mm. Like, I think couples, if they see an aesthetically pleasing looking grid, then they're yeah. going to be like, oh, they understand visual stuff. Like, yeah. I, and I it trust is, that. Yeah. It's like a shop front, isn't it? So I always say to yeah. people, your Instagram is the bait. It is how you lure people. And then if they like it enough, they'll go to visit your website. And that's where you hook them and catch the yeah. fish so right. never underestimate your instagram how it looks because typically what we do as business owners is we don't update our website enough as much as we should so everybody posts on instagram instagram but don't neglect your website as well they go hand in hand yeah so i would say to people if you don't love your website change it update it because people i think spend so much time putting their content on instagram they forget their website so as soon as i take a picture that i love it goes to my website first and then my instagram because people aren't going to part with thousands of pounds in a dm but they will on a website because the website is the deciding factor for them so as soon as they land their website on your website it has to yeah it's got to match, match up yeah that's a good, point. good point and that's a mistake loads of people make they go oh don't look at my website i'm like why would i not look at your website they're like oh i haven't updated it i'm like but why haven't you updated? If you, if you have to <laughs> say, don't go on my website, then you you no, know you know you're not doing well. Exactly. And why should a couple part with thousands of pounds if you can't part with thousands of pounds to make your website look a certain way? So, and it's the mm. best. You've got to remember also, this is another top tip, is don't place too much emphasis on Instagram. Your website is so important because you own that online real estate. You don't own Instagram. You don't own that space. It could go down tomorrow. You could lose all your followers. You could lose all your content. You could get hacked. But your website, you should be blogging. Again, SEO is, again, it goes hand in hand with referrals. And it's like for me, it's blogging is equally as important. So those beautiful weddings that you have, blog them, keyword them. Um, because that gets picked up as well massively. So don't underestimate that. Mm. Adam, we need about seven hours today for Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all, what this is all great. And if you for everyone listening, if you've enjoyed any of this, then we'll link your course because they should go and buy that and check it out. Because obviously everything that you've discussed there and ten times ten, we'll link that and everyone should check that out. There was I did make a note about um digital products uh just if we can ask you one last question um because we, we spoke to the russell kent nichols who i know you know really well um my twin brother <laughs> on a couple, a couple episodes back um all about digital products um and his, his experiences and success with that but then when i was researching your website i've noticed that you do loads as well um so it, just a just a, if a quick little idea of what your experience has been um and whether you uh recommend it is it you know has it been a good is it a passive thing is it has it been worthwhile for you does it tie into your overall brand um what what's your experience with, with oh, the digital products i could i could talk about this in a whole other episode because i am pro digital products pro passive income well that's not truly passive because you have to keep marketing it for it to be passive so yeah. you make money in your sleep oh but it is by far the best thing I could have done for my business 100% so 
digital products came about for me because of lockdown, because I had no money. So that's how it started um, because I wasn't eligible for any grants, loans, funding mm. from the government because I was a limited company. So I got nada. So I always say to people like, well, what do I sell? Like what kind of digital product could I sell? Your best clue about what you can sell as a business is what do you get asked the most in DMs? And that's your biggest clue. So for me, it was always, are you selling a preset? Are you selling a preset? What preset do you use? Are you selling it? So I was like, well, I should really sell it because I'm broke. So I did. The so, market's just asking you for it. Isn't exactly. It? Why not? So yeah. that's, that's my top tip with a digital product is what do you get asked most from your peers? Because that is what you can sell. So right. I sold my preset um, on, yeah, on a, a digital platform. And they kind of grew from there. And I'll be honest, like Russell massively helped. Russell built my education website. Um, he is a mastermind shit, yeah. at Shopify. He is, he's Shay Hart. He is like a mini genius. So he helped massively with that. He built the entire education website. <laughs> Shout out to Russell. Um, and then from then, I just kept listening to what people were asking for, um, guides and contracts and various products um, and stuff that people are going to use. But also at the same time, you've got to keep marketing it. But it's the best thing I definitely did my business because that just ticks over in the background and basically means I don't have to say yes to every single wedding I don't I could spend more time with my little girl and I think that was a massive wake-up call since having her because I the year after COVID was just like well you know everyone remembers 2021 as like PTSD <laughs> the year you did all the weddings the catch-up um I never want to do a year like, like at that again. That year was just too much. I wasn't home enough. I was just burnt out. And then having digital products has enabled me to free up more time, to have more freedom, to spend more time with my family and not say yes to everything. <clears throat> and I love it. It's really, it's really fun. It's, it's a completely different side to my business. Yeah. Um, so I always say to people, yeah, hundred percent do it and do it quickly because people are jumping onto it now even more in the wedding you you will see any photographer like oh that education it just that's definitely on the rise so if you're thinking of doing it do it you won't regret it you just wish you did it sooner youtube is a, an amazing place learning about digital products how to set them up what to sell how to do it the steps for doing it okay. um and then you have to actively consistently market those products because people think oh yeah I can just post it and then people will know about it and buy it overnight now you've got to constantly keep marketing mm. it to make it truly passive um but it's brilliant it's great so cool I'm well I'm gonna I'll link I'll obviously link your course but I'm gonna link everyone to your to your product as well because I think just it, I found it massively inspirational and I think um oh, anyone so. should be inspired by doing that if you've got a wedding business and certainly you you're you know a few years in and you're not just starting out then it's definitely an avenue that um people can get inspiration from uh so we have a few ending questions oh this is fun that we ask everybody okay. um and the first one is uh what's your like your craziest wedding story uh something mm -hmm. embarrassing something outrageous something that happened at a wedding if you've got any little oh tidbits my gosh. My craziest that you can share that aren't uh, <gasps> under a like a oh, which ones are no, non-disclosure. Non oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what it is. I do just tend to attract like stuff that just happens. That is just I've done some stupid shit. Like <laughs> I'll, do, <laughs> I'll do anything for the shop. Um, you know when you actually ask in the spot, and you can't really remember. I once gave a lift to a bunch of guests to the wrong wedding. I thought they were going to the wedding I was shooting. That's probably up there. I saw them, <laughs> I saw them, this is so me. I was driving to the wedding and I saw them and obviously they're wedding guests, the dressed in wedding guests get. I was like, oh, are you going to the wedding? They're like, yes. I was like, do you want to live? They're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to a wedding. They got, they got in the car and we were, they were, they were a riot. We were like chatting. They're like, oh, how long have you, have you known the couple? They're like, oh, we went to uni with them. I was like, oh, that's crazy. I said as a joke, wouldn't it be really funny if it was the wrong, if it was the wrong wedding? And they were like, ha ha ha. And I said it, I said a fake name. I was like, oh, so you going to like Sophie and Adams? They were like, what? And I was like, oh, I'm joking. I mean, I meant so and so. And they're like, wait, what? 
And I was like, no, 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 no. I stopped the car. I was like, wait, what? And they were like, wait, what? And I was like, are we not going to the same wedding? They were like, no. That's oh, amazing. I had the side of town. So my good deed backfired and I stopped the car. <laughs> we, they were just in hysterics laughing. I was like, guys, I am so Did sorry. you drive them to their wedding or did I you just ditch them, them and back. carry on to yours? I drove them back. I was like, I'm going to be late. I would take you back. I'll take you as close as I can to said wedding. Um, that probably up there is the most ridiculous thing I've done. Imagine um, those guests <laughs> turning up late to the church. Well, you know, we were on time, but then this, this woman picked it's... us up. And just oh, drove no. us the opposite way. <laughs> That's just so me. Because I was like, oh, I'm the photographer. They're like, oh. Oh, it was really that is, that is, that's, that's great. I'm happy that's with that. a good one. It's my <laughs> biggest fear. It's my biggest fear to turning up at the wrong wedding and setting all my kit up and then realizing shit I'm at the wrong wedding. So I, right, I and all the, the churches church have one. the same church name. It's always like yeah. Saint Michael's of this, the Saint David's yeah. of this. It's always like the same. I'm like, guys, can you just think of a cute church name? No disrespect to the Lord and stuff, but can we think of like a cute church name because they all sound Don't the same. blaspheme on Saint David. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm hell for this. Uh, what else do we ask, Adam? Um, oh yeah, okay. If you were, if you were not a photographer and you could Ooh. do any other any other job in the wedding industry, <gasps> what would it be and why? Any other in the wedding industry? Yeah, if you're not a photographer, oh, wedding planner. Yeah, wedding planner. Yeah, I think you'd be brilliant at it. Planner style, although it's really stressful. Like. Honestly, mm. any I I planning a workshop last year, my anxiety was through the roof, and I said to my planner friend, "I'm like, is this how you feel every day?" She's like, "Every day." <laughs> I, like, I don't know how you do this. this well, you've got to so get much, if you're the so planner, you're the planner. You have to get everything right. Everything. If you're the photographer, you've got to get one thing right. If you're the singer, one thing right. Right. So planner is everything's got exactly. to be perfect. They're the, they're the conductor. They're orchestrating this like show, and the the amount of balls in the air for like months leading to the day. Mm. I'm like, nah. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's amazing. I, I would love to plan a wedding if I had like unlimited budget. They're like Rebecca. What would your dream wedding be? I'd be like, okay, let's go. But the anxiety and the stress might might not be the best yeah, thing. We, we, we had a <laughs> we had a, a wedding planner on the podcast this week actually. Oh. Based in Ibiza, she does Ibiza wow. and, and she she has all that stress with an extra stress added onto it. So I can't imagine what uh, what what her life. Is well, like. that, that lines into the to our la closing question um, because we always ask each guest to leave a question for the next one. So we're going to ask oh. you to, to leave a question if if you if we can. Um, so, but Lauren, who was the wedding planner, the Ibiza wedding planner that was on our last yeah. episode has left this question for you, which was, um, what's the worst thing that you've ever seen from a planner? Like, or or I, I've, I'm going to extend this, any supplier, you don't, obviously don't name names, but what's oh. the, the dodgiest thing you've ever seen another supplier do, do that you're like, mm. oh. I think she was just trying to be, it was, it was quite, it's, it's quite a, a controversial question, but I think she was just trying to spill the tea on planners basically. What's the <laughs> dodgiest thing <clears throat> I've seen another supplier do? I mean, I've definitely seen some shady stuff. Um, that's really hard. I'm going to be a good girl and not friend anybody under the bus because Very it's nice. such a small industry. And things do, let's be honest, things do happen on wedding days. Every wedding day has something because it's a real human day with humans put in this very foreign situation and but I always say there's always a solution there's definitely been things that are like how is this happening this is really happening like I, I don't know yeah there's been so many things um which could have been prevented but I always say to people I've had to remind people why are you here we're here for the couple that's the priority yeah. like what are you doing this is not a content this is not a photo shoot for you I've had I've, I've had moments like that when I've had to kind of check in with people um because i think people have lost sight about what the day is about and they're just content hungry or just 
doing things for them and i'd be like no the couple don't like that like 100 percent. i see that all the time it's a recent, it's a recent problem isn't it it's a I'll recent say, problem i'll say that um and I need it's to all get kinds my, of, i need to get my reels yeah, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's all kinds of suppliers um yeah. yeah so i have seen all kinds of things but um there's always a solution but at the end of the day i always say to people like just remember why we're here and i think if i do my job and the couple are happy and everything is running smoothly and the couple don't know what's going on we've, we've done a good job <laughs> you, you navigated that question well I expect <laughs> nothing less. You, you're too nice to answer a question like yeah. that uh, but, but can we have can we have a question from yourself for okay. our next which just uh, something within related yeah. efficiency, if possible if you were to go back in time when you first started your business what would you tell yourself not to do that future you now knows if that makes sense got it yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I not put an advert in the local paper no, you yeah, spot. We've, we've had do that not put an advert in the local oh, paper a great question yeah because i think that's it i always think it's like what would you do differently but at the same time i know that lots of the decisions i've made in yesteryear have led me the path to now so i think like yolo no regrets even though i'm like oh why did you do that but I would love to meet with past me and be like, right. How cool would down. that be? That'd be amazing. We'd be like, hush, sit, sit down. Just sit yourself down and go, do you know what? You're going to do all right. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, you're going to be all, all good. right. Yeah. Like, don't worry about gear. Just focus on like the skills. Like, oh, I'm talking, I'm like 13 year old Adam that's worried about like pubes haven't come in yet. I'm, I'm going to sit him down and go, don't worry, mate. You'll be, <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay. Oh, well, that's coming. What are you on about? like you're talking about young young like yeah if i'm that teenage yeah. me i'd be like yeah. don't worry people you're not gonna Love meet to your me people around little, little, little it will little grow it, it will grow <laughs> oh, there's yeah, some things that you shouldn't that. really share online isn't there um, but it's out there now i, I mean what it's a done, good quality podcast guys you know talking about biscuits teenage <laughs> things oh it's been, honestly rebecca <laughs> i can't thank you enough you've been, we could you've talk been brilliant about um, so yeah, I've got my work account, very original name, Rebecca Carpenter Photography. And then my education account is the RC Education. Um, so those are my two accounts. I'm also going to link all your stuff in the podcast. Ah, oh, thanks. And Cheers, things. Adam. Um, um, and you can also find me on YouTube as well, which is coming back this year, by the way. It's, I've taken a break, but I'm coming back. Excellent. <laughs> Ed educational stuff, That is that? Yes. So videos more for behind suppliers. the scenes. Yes, yeah. um, for photographers mostly. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! So thanks so much for listening. We really hope that you found this episode insightful, inspirational. And if you did enjoy that, then please consider subscribing to us wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify. We're a Think Wedding Business. We're also on YouTube and Instagram. So if you want to watch us, you can go over to YouTube and find us at Think Wedding Business and the same over on Instagram to keep up with all of our future episodes. We'd really love you to subscribe and join us on this journey. And if you do like this content, please consider giving us a five-star review. It just helps us get seen and helps spread the word. So thanks again for listening Wings and we'll see you out. next time. Bye-bye.